Hi hey everybody, welcome to another GMG Review. Today we're taking a look at Armies, Legions, and Hordes from Dave Taylor Miniatures. Now, I met Dave Taylor in 2003 um, when he and Dirty Steve from the old White Dwarf team in the US uh, came up to Canada to film a battle, or not film a battle report, to, to do a battle report for White Dwarf, for the North American White Dwarf. Um, uh, that a uh, bunch of us in the retail chain actually put together for the Eye of Terror campaign. So that's it's almost 20 years ago, it's 16 years ago, uh, and that was the first time we ever met. It was a, we were both, we're both younger, yet younger, more naive men, <laughs> um, and we're putting together the Battleport in the old school way. So what that meant was playing a game, um, taking lots of notes, and then trying to set up sort of like the, the really important vital scenes from it. And, uh, and do photography and stuff and layout for the, for the magazine. And he and Steve um, hung out with us for a whole weekend. We, we did this, it was all zombies, because of course it was zombies, because it was us. Uh, <laughs> zombies in the trader guard list for um, uh, 140,000. And the new defiler, which we'd had sent over, um, which we didn't actually have the plastic defiler yet, it was actually in metal and resin, because it was a prototype. Uh, and we, we filmed this awesome battle part in this Khazar Varn table. Khazar Varn was a um, Eye of Terror display that uh, the Canadian team did for Canadian Games Day that was uh, put together by J.B. Coulter, who, which was, I, it's, I think it's yet to be outdone. It had so much Forge World terrain on it for the time because there was no like Seize Death buildings. It was, it was madness. It was a beautiful gaming table um, and it was fighting against, I think it was Guard. It was Guard against Trader Guard with all the zombies and Death Garden and the Defiler and stuff like that. It was Cadians, that's what it was, because the Cadian list was also in the um, the Terror campaign. Uh, yeah, and, and that was the first time we ever met and we worked together for, oh geez, probably like 10 years more after that and uh, you know, and just saw each other at various events and stuff. Um, and then we both ended up somehow doing freelance stuff in the miniature wargaming industry and he has put together this awesome book uh, that's about wargaming collections. Now, Dave and I share some sensibilities when it comes to doing projects and army work and stuff, where it we we both tend to we have different ways of approaching it, but we both tend to look at painting as something that we in, we enjoy as like a habit. It's something that we do. It's part of our lives. For some people, that might be things like hiking or biking or you know, it's just a thing that you kind of do all the time. You do every day. You don't really think about it. it miniature painting is kind of that thing for us, and that makes it less of a chore. Um, and so this book is kind of about his philosophy and approach to completing large wargaming projects. People would always ask him questions about how, how it is that he can be so prolific and get things done. Um, and this book is kind of like the, the culmination of his thoughts and ideas and stuff. And he does pull together some people, including myself, to do some sort of um, additional articles on, on what that process might look like. And it's designed not to really give you like a step-by-step -step on how you do a project from start to finish. It's more about how do you approach figuring out how to do that project for yourself. Because everybody's different, everybody has a different way of doing things and approaching like work in general. And finding the way that works best for you is the way that typically is, is going to give you the most success. And how do you break it down into pieces and stages and look at what success is gonna look like and stuff. And he approaches it all those different stages and gives you lots of questions to ask yourself and stuff to think about. And then examples, beautiful examples of all the projects he's done too. Um, not just in the Games Workshop hobby, but also in sort of like the larger wargaming hobby from his time at War Games Illustrated. He's got lots of historical stuff in here uh, from his time with Kuhlman or not. He's got some beautiful Dark Age pictures um, and just products that he's done throughout the years for various companies and, um, and different sort of like miniature war games. And then just stuff these in for himself too, because sometimes, and this is really important, you gotta do projects just for you. So let's take a look at it right now on this beautiful hardcover Armies, Legions, and Hordes. And so here it is in its lovely Kickstarter edition slipcase, Armies, Legions, and Hordes. Um, and now this is available both uh, digitally and in a lovely hardcover like this. Uh, I'll talk about at, at the end where you can actually get this now. Because um, obviously the crowdfunds what made it possible and it's available going forward through a various bunch of different um, uh, vendors which will all be listed in the video description and I'll talk about it at the end too. So you can hear the C right here. Th this army is pretty iconic. He talks about it in the book, but this is his Genswick foot um, who were uh, sort of his second, I guess, Dan Abnett project after the Gaunt's Ghosts. The Gaunt's Ghosts get a whole blurb in here and it's so probably something you might actually remember um, of Dave's. I'm gonna try and not offend people by how I turn the pages here because I've, I've smoothed the pages for the camera in the past and people have absolutely lost their minds. So I'm just gonna gently turn the pages uh, to show you this little forward. And a wonderful forward by Dan Adlin himself um, talking about uh, you know what Dave does and, and, and sort of like how the how, how, how things can inspire. 
Um, and I'm not going to ruin it for you because you really should read it for yourself, but it's an excellent forward for the book. Um, and, and congratulations on Dave for getting Dan to write it because that's a huge author and it's a very, very cool little bit of, of like background and stuff. Um, so you can see here the Gensrick foot with some of um, his blood packed. There's a lot of abnet in, in some of Dan, uh, Dave's 40k projects. And he does talk about this right from the beginning about what this is all about and how he did it. Um, this is a great tip here, the, the starting a project journal. Um, it's something that he talks about. How do you how do you keep track of what you've done and what you got going on? You can see here some of his Dark Age stuff, his beautiful uh, salt flat nomads, some of his conversions. Now, on top of being a really talented and prolific painter, Dave is just a fantastic modeler as well. Um, and if you ever want to get inspiration on just just ways of using bits you wouldn't have thought of, go look through some of his past projects because they're fantastic. More Dark Age stuff, gaming events with friends, doing armies. And then some stuff by John Lyons from Beast of War. Doing Ames, more of his stuff from Dark Age. Pictures of great gaming events. This is a bit by me. <laughs> Thankfully stolen from, um, from uh, an old white dwarf article by Jervis Johnson. And attributed to uh, Dave's classic. This is here, the original. One of his first armies for 40k, the Gaunt's Ghosts. Gorgeous conversions they did way back when. It's such a, it's such a wonderfully late 90s early 2000s paint job too with the goblin green base rims that super bright flock it's it's amazing how things change over time just like the, the materials we have access to and how that makes things look different some of his knights his empire knights knights of more and what's the next section keeping yourself on track using airbrushes and techniques integrating units into an older army doing new stuff Joel Moon, the Mordian 7th blog, some of his stuff. How to make a plan and plan for success. This is neat, using spreadsheets and stuff. Mel Bose, the train tutor, doing some stuff on train, making a nice tr uh, train collection to play your games on. And actually, sorry, I should mention, um, he and Mel are collaborating on, on Dave's next book, which is about doing train. Motivation, staying motivated. Hey, setting a calendar date, that's a good one. Triumph, knowing when you're done and got things finished. And then now we get onto the beautiful color section. So here's his Genswick foot with these beautiful, the big Berthas, these awesome like artillery pieces that he made. The Genswick rifles. And so what, what comes now basically after this first section, so the first 40 or so pages are devoted to tips on doing the project work on sort of like the, the what it says on the tin. Um, and then later on, we're gonna see some army features. So this is like going through all those different armies and he does a feature basically on each one. And they're all about, oh geez, maybe eight or 10 pages um, in beautiful full color. And it's all photography of his, his different things he's done, including conversions and stuff too, and a bit on how those happen, like this beautiful lander that he made, his Gorgon. Some stuff for fantasy, his old empire army. Artillery train of known and doing things like these, like the, the defenders doing inserts for bases to make units bigger. It's a, a beautiful thing. It's a, a classic Warhammer trick. People don't really do anymore because obviously things aren't ranked up. Great swords and handguns, a whole feature on these guys. He did all the bases himself. So they're all in this wonderful tire, tile because they're supposed to be defenders of the city of Nuln. So like he did them on like finished floor basically. His Napoleonic stuff. Let's see, British Napoleonic Wars. Some great stuff on conversions and stuff too. I don't, I don't want to ruin it. So I don't want to spend too much time on each page because obviously, part of having this is, is or having this book is the beautiful pictures and stuff. Um, this salt flat nomads, and his firecaster geary for dark age. Beautiful collection. Uh, some more tips and stuff on how to create a, a cohesive collection. There is more sort of like tip work littered through here when he talks about all the, the individual collections themselves. They all, they all tend to focus on a different thing that, that makes the collection sort of unique and advice you can give on doing them. Terrain, the Fabled Realms. So this is uh, stuff he did to add to some pre-painted um, Fabled Realms terrain, which is, looks really nice, but just how to sort of like make it a bit, a bit nicer. And this is all the Darkland stuff that he painted. Deadlines, doing a large quantity of US stuff for bolt action. Some beautiful US army vehicles there, some Shermans, half tracks, and a Greyhound. And then this, the God Machine. This was a project he did, um, I think, one of the first things he did for his Patreon was uh, a project lot for doing um, Dominator Fortis, his, his Warlord Titan. And this is a 40k scale Warlord Titan, so this is not epic, or this is not Titanicus, but just all the things he went through basically cutting and making the bases. And just doing it all in stages. And the fact that it's all, all the interiors finished, everything's all done for it. 
some great post-apocalyptic stuff uh, that he's done for This Is Not a Test with Jerry Maguire. Beautiful, some of Joey's uh, beautiful um, robots and, and cars and stuff and his Cannibal War Band. And then he, I think he did this as a commission, his, uh, this, this work he did on this Custodes Army, huge Custodes Army, both for Horus Heresy and for um, 40K. <laughs> was that all the gold that isn't yours? <laughs> oh, and he also included his own custody army. He converted this army, oh geez, for a GT like ages ago in Baltimore. 2004, the year after I met him. Yeah, so this was this was long before there was custodies miniatures. He made this up. Like this is like bits of Inquisitor Tyrus from the Inquisitor game with like dreadnought legs. Like how how what, what prognostication? What was funny was most of this was being based on the card game, the Horse Heresy era card game. Um that was like the second expansion basically for the Sabretooth card game for 40K. Uh, and all the artwork here um, ended up in the Visions books. So Visions of Darkness, there was four of them, one kind of for each of the Chaos Powers in the Horus Heresy. Beautiful vehicles. His Army of Parade, his Warhammer uh, Army of Moor. This is the, the other Empire Army he did based on the God of Death from Empire. And they've all got these awesome like Venetian masks and stuff. He did a lot of conversion work on these. You can see here he sculpted them all himself. I love these, the weird murder puppets, undead horsies. Building centerpieces, more great advice on how to make something unique that sits in the middle of the army, like his big Berthas, his half tracks and stuff. The cargo sixes, another thing from um, from uh, Abbott's books, and the stock tanks, I love these too. The blood pack stock tanks are basically like huge, he basically, all out of plastic art, made these huge like praying mantis chaos tanks, and they're fantastic. Counts as armies, so things that aren't quite what they are. Converting miniatures to look like something else. His Mechanicum, beautiful Mechanicum army. You can see here some of this is actually uh, sculpted out of like the cherubs and bits and all the, like the, those are all night goblin legs and stuff, but he's used all these wonderful bits to make um, Mechanicus stuff. And then Flames of War, doing some 15 mils. And all this was unlocked basically through the crowdfund. Uh, doing Blood Rage from Kumini, so his Blood Rage collection, all the different tribes, all the different monsters, monsters and gods you have to fight in Blood Rage. And there's his Blood Pact, another one of his famous abnet based armies, with little kid psychers and all that crazy stuff. And then I'll convert up with their crazy like Joker masks. They all have these like grinning sort of like death masks. Patterson and the Infardi, I love these guys like weird psychery baddies. <laughs> Super creepy. All the infantry, cargo sixes that are all converted to chaos. Various tanks, just converted from the guard. And then uh, converting his ogre army that he had for 8th and 6th, so 7th and 8th edition 40k. Or sorry, uh, Warhammer, uh, Warhammer Fantasy Battle into Warhammer Age of Sigmar. So he rebased them all for AOS. And just the processes for that too. There's some, there's some good recipes in here and stuff. <coughs> and you can see here the transition from square to round. So this one, he, did, he actually just cut down, didn't ruin the base, and then attached to a larger base to make it fit. Same with some of these guys. More guard. 20 years ago, although it's startling, I didn't think I painted these 20 years ago. 99, he painted the Tanith Ghosts. Back where it all began, the first founding of the Tanith. And this is a classic. I think he actually did this army a couple times to, to kind of like modernize them and stuff too. So you can see there's Bragg and, um, and or Owen McColl and Ezra Apnit right there, the, the, the crazy fighting stick guy that they find on the Chaos Planet who comes with them. The Blue Bloods. My, one of my favorite scenes, I think, of all time in Gaunt's Toasts is when uh, they're in the middle of like, they're halfway through like an engagement and uh, Corbeck basically stops to boss or to box the colonel. <laughs> or no, maybe the colonel stops him. They like ambush him or something like that, and the colonel wants to have like a boxing match with Corbeck, and Corbeck just beats the hell out of him. <laughs> These guys are like the Ponzi fancy, fancy lad uh, guard regiment, and they don't like the ghosts because the ghosts are, are grimy poors. And then a wonderful thank you to everybody that made it all possible. You can see here the names of all the backers and stuff too. Cool card. Whoop. The many thanks. 
And that's it. So there it is our flip through of Armies, Legions, and Hordes from Dave Taylor Miniatures. A wonderful book. It's a great, a great collector's piece if you um, are just a fan of like the last 20 years of miniature wargaming and want to sort of hear about a bunch of people's thoughts, but mostly Dave's brain on how um, to best go about collecting miniature wargaming collections. <laughs> it sounds silly, but that's that's really what it is here. Is it's, it's someone's distilled experience. Um, having collected thousands and tens and thousands of models for a variety of different collections, both for work and for pleasure, um, and how you go about it, making that not a chore. How, how you make that something that you can enjoy and sort of be proud of over time. So, highly recommend it. Um, you can you can check it out. Uh, I'm not affiliated with this apart from just having contributed uh, a two-page sort of blurb to it, um, and this is all going to Dave. So. Uh, yeah, uh, the, um, the like I said below, you can check out some vendors for getting it. I know it's Warlord in the UK. I'll put a whole list of them up. It's Warlord for the UK. I think Ironheart Arsons can get it for you uh, if you're in North America. And um, yeah, you should check it out because I think everyone can do with this advice. It it makes it makes miniature. It sort of breaks down how you can make miniature wargaming something that isn't a chore. It's something that that you can enjoy finishing those collections and how much more enjoyment you can get having a finished collection that you can then play games with. So there it is, armies, legions, and hordes. Um, so if you, <laughs> what do I think of this book? If you want to basically avail yourself to the, the, the experience of someone who's been in the miniature working industry for over two decades, um, this book is kind of like being able to sit in uh, a really great after convention dinner with a bunch of experienced hobbyists, if you're kind of new to the hobby, and listen to them talk about what it is they've done, how they've gotten there, and sort of their best practices and, and hot tips on making things making things enjoyable, making things making it so that your projects can be something that you you look forward to doing, um, and you get done in a way that's satisfying and they don't linger and they don't sort of like go to the back burner or burn you out. Um, and I think that's advice that a lot of people could use because as we kind of move forward in time, I feel like there is more and more of a disconnect between the two camps of people who enjoy the miniature side of the miniature wargaming hobby and the, the people who enjoy the gaming, the wargaming side of the miniature wargaming hobby. Um, and this is something I think that could bring them together a bit. So the people that really enjoy the miniature side of it, um, it's about even getting getting involved in the wargaming side of it as a way of motivating you to get projects done, having deadlines, having things to work towards. And for the ones who are on the wargaming side, maybe about making it feel like less of a chore to also participate in that half. Because it is a hobby with two halves. Um, and I feel like I feel like they're like with lots of things in life right now, people are tending to get into camps and, and they're either on one side or the other and they feel like they should they don't have to or they don't want to participate in the other half. And this isn't about anyone having to do one thing or the other, but it certainly bridges the gap and makes it more more approachable for both sides. So I highly recommend it. This is a great book for anyone's collection, um, especially if you are just sort of looking to avail yourself of the experience of, of a, a man who's been in the hobby forever and who has accomplished a great deal. So um, check it out. Like I said, Ironheart Artisans and Warlord Games are probably your two best places to get it, but there'll be a variety of other places too that I will link below um, on Dave's Kickstarter update talking about all the places that should have it in the future. Um, and yeah, go grab yourself a copy if you didn't get one from the crowdfund, uh, and it should be available there going forward. So hope you enjoyed this GMG review. Congrats to Dave for getting this done, and uh, look forward to checking out his next crowdfund for um, a, a similar book about train making with Mel Bowes from The Train Tutor. So we'll see you next time for more GMG reviews. Till then, I'm Ash. Have a great I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below so you get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Death Ray Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.